Hi guys. Hello. <laughs> I'm still setting up. I gotta get my iPad recording. Okay. Still doesn't say I'm live on my iPad, so. There it is. Okay. All right, so I have a new setup. I practiced a little bit yesterday. Um, I'm on my desktop now, on my actual computer. I used to just stream from my phone and I kind of put like my iPad in front of my computer and I showed both things, but now I've got pretty intense setup. Hold on, mute this. Intense for me, not intense for gamers or anything, but I have my new microphone, which is cool. Hopefully you guys can hear me well, and I have you on my desktop. I've got my iPad um, screen recording because there was a problem before with the lives like recording. It didn't save the comments, and then one time it just didn't save at all, so I figured this was the best way to do it. A couple of you gave me that tip, so... It was easier, thanks, Sierra. Yes, it was easier to set up today. It's still, like, at first a little bit um, all over the place, but I think I just have to kind of get out of the live on my computer. And then I have it nice and big on my iPad now so I can actually see what I look like. <laughs> okay, so yesterday when we were together... Hold on, I do have to do a little bit of adjusting here because I'm realizing that wasn't in the right place. Okay, that's better. No, nope, it's not better. Hold on. Got to fix that. I have to have it windowed on my view so that I can actually... <laughs> Sorry, guys. So that I can actually read the... Have the entry up and the Word doc. So when I change the window to, like, bigger or smaller, it screws it up on the view. But here it is. Okay. So now on my screen, I have half and half. I've got the diary entry on one side and I've got the word doc on the other. So yesterday when we came on it was like a just a test run. I think these were all test runs here that I was trying to figure out how to use the live but um, I was reading through the diary entries that we did last time because the last live that I did did not save. Unfortunately TikTok says it couldn't process. So we lost that one. I couldn't upload it to YouTube. So I figured I'd hop on here and kind of reread them. And it was also a good opportunity for me to practice with the new TikTok Live that I have downloaded. They have a, a PC version now. Hello, Owen. Hi, uh, Micah. Is Micah your first name? Because um, Micah is now a Diary Detective subscriber. I just got that notification before I came on. So thank you. We're happy to have you. Hopefully you'll get an email from either Patreon or Discord to join. And then if you click that link, it will automatically add you. All right, so I'm going to, let's see, how many people are here? 42 people are here. Okay, so that's probably everybody who had registered. And I think I'll just start off, I have it open to one in the future. This is something I'm going to have to get used to. It, it won't let me, for some reason, show just my regular camera roll on my computer. So I had to upload things to Google Drive. So I'm not used to this kind of scrolling and every picture has to load, but once we get to the right um, page, we'll be good. Okay. So there's the sixth. So what's cool about this is I can actually zoom in pretty easily. It's different than me having to reach through, reach over the phone and around the phone. I'm just still fiddling here. Okay. I don't know. We'll see. No, you know what? I'm still seeing strangeness happening. Thank you for saying that, Rachel. Rachel says, take your time. I have like a little thing in here that tells people what I'm doing and it's not showing. I don't know if it's just not showing on my iPad that little blue box, could you guys see that before or not? Can you just see it now or could you see it before too? 
Thanks for the likes, guys, even though I'm fumbling. So it's showing. Okay, but was it showing before? Yes, it was just cut off. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. Oh, man, it's like I can see so much more on my screen. Hold on, let me make this. Once I do this once, I can save the settings. It's just, unfortunately, a lot of fumbling the first time. <laughs> but I want it to be full. Okay, I guess I'm just going to leave it at this for now. We'll see how this works. It was up in the left-hand corner out of the way slightly. Okay, so now what I'm seeing on my screen on my iPad, it's like all the way up in the corner. Is it floating randomly in the middle of the page for you guys? Yes, you could before. Oh. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if my iPad... Hold on, let me try one more thing. Sorry. I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to go on my phone. Because this is an iPad, so sometimes the iPad looks different. But here's the problem. I have to log out. This is just too much. <laughs> Okay. Pretty much covering the bottom of the writing, unfortunately. Okay. It's over what you're typing. Okay, so I haven't typed anything yet. I was hoping I could stick this in here so that people would be able to see what we're doing. Oh, thank you. You sent me a picture of my view. Okay. Of your view, I mean, Emily. Thank you. Okay, so, you, okay, so that is what I see on my computer. So I'm moving this back up. On my iPad, it's like when I put it up here... It's gone. So that's really weird. Ugh, that's not good. I wanted to use my iPad because it has more space on it. My phone is like full. Okay, whatever. I'm going to keep going as long as you guys can see everything. Um, and when I start typing again, I'll be typing underneath that. So that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so... Hold on. Maybe you could add Todd's full name in the blue box in case... Yes, I could. Okay, um, okay. Oh, it didn't save it. Oh, such a pain in the butt. Sorry, guys. It was easier yesterday almost. Okay, we're reading and researching a diary from 1944, written by Todd Delaney. And then it's like really stupid if I don't hit save and then apply, it goes away. But now I hit save. But I don't want to cover up everything. Okay. Oh, good. You're talking about the weather while I'm fumbling around. Good. Okay. So the weather where I am, it was really gross today. I know no one's rushing me. It's just me rushing me, but <laughs> okay. I'm glad that looks great. I'll leave it like that for a while. Um, and yeah, it was nasty today. It was raining. It was windy. It was dark all day long. It's pretty chilly over there. <laughs> That's, is that a pun? <laughs> it's pretty Chile. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's go on to... Oh, hold on. We're always on here on Tuesday until you fall asleep. It's nearly 12 here. Oh, I'm sorry. I could try in the summertime. I can go a little bit earlier because I'm a teacher. So this is basically what works for me after school. But in the summer, I'll be a little bit more flexible. I'll have to change it from Tuesdays, though, because I have a class on Tuesday. Okay, so I'm going to try this setup. We'll see how it goes. And then I can adjust things if it turns out you can't see something I'll try to zoom out of the entry here. I'm looking on my iPad to make sure, but of course, it looks like you guys see something a little bit different than what I see on my iPad, so I'm just going to keep going. Don't worry, you catch up what you miss on YouTube anyways. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we did the one yesterday then because I lost the live from last week. It won't download, so I think you were here yesterday too. I remember you commented. Okay, so... You'll probably fall asleep sooner tonight. You should join. Oh, you're telling her to join. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm going to start February 6th. Oh, you guys like when I write the actual day. It always takes a little bit of time to get into it, but 
basically in the beginning of the diary that we've read so far, um, Todd is still not feeling well. He's recovering from his cerebral hemorrhage. And what we're noticing is that we're assuming it's Edna, his wife, who's writing for him. And what we're noticing is she is starting to write from her perspective more in the beginning of the diary from 1944 and, like, throughout the rest of 1943 after he had his accident or his medical... I don't know if it was an accident or if it was just a medical event. After that happened, she started writing for him and she was writing from his perspective almost as if he was telling her what to write and she was just writing it down, um, which would make sense because if he had something like that happen, he probably couldn't write anymore. I'm sure there were a lot of neurological symptoms. So... Now, though, what we're noticing is his voice is starting to fade out a little bit and she's using the name Todd. Like, she's referring to him as Todd instead of I, because that would be, you know, how Todd would refer to himself as. So it's been an interesting shift. Um, so you think this is the last entry we did? Yeah, you're right. So I'll just move to the next one then. But I did see a couple of comments. So when did Todd um, die... Also, does he still, when did Todd die? Also, is he still mowing the lawn? I haven't been here in a bit. So he didn't die, he didn't die in this diary yet. He, I think he dies in September. So he's still alive. He's just um, up and down, it seems like. Like some days he's able to get out and go for walks. Other days he's in bed. And it seems like he's not as involved in some of the entries of the diary anymore. But, um, hold on. Uh, you had another question. Is he still mowing the lawn? No, he hasn't been doing anything as far as taking care of his land or building Edna's cabin anymore. It seems like everyone's pitching in to help him now because he's pretty weak. It's it's really sad to see because he went from mowing the lawn every single day and taking care of his potatoes and all that and going to work and coming home and building his daughter a cabin to barely being able to get out of bed which has been it's really sad to read and you know that must have really bothered him so I'm just looking at my iPad to try to I'm gonna make it viewable on my iPad so that the recording looks good but I'm sorry if you guys see a lot of extra stuff okay so if you pay, will you automatically be put into the private servers? Yes, you will. You'll get a email from Patreon or from Discord. I'm not sure. It's from one of them. After you sign up for the Patreon, it sends you a link. And when you click on that link, it automatically adds you to the other ones. And if you can't see that, if you have trouble, I can try to help. But it seems like everybody else has been able to get in pretty good. We have like six or seven people in there now. Okay, so... Thanks. Um, someone said Sunday is done. Thank you. I always have a hard time starting off. You've joined the Discord too and subscribed to YouTube. Awesome. Thank you. Subscribing to YouTube helps too. Okay, so I'm just going to start typing. Um, I can also, if you guys are joining the Discord and you're having, you know, like you haven't used it before, we can do a live together sometime or a video chat and I can try to walk you through it. I'm also kind of new to it. I've used it for a while, but I haven't, I haven't used it in depth at all. I use it more just for like a chat, um, which is what it is, but it can be a lot more than that too. All right. So I'm going to keep going. Another nice day. Todd went out for a walk in the forenoon. He uses that word a lot. So it's interesting because now I don't know whether to say he uses that word a lot or she because now it's clearly written from Edna's perspective because she's using the name Todd. You had to leave 50 plus Discord servers so I could put my notifications back on for this server. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I know I'm trying not to spam people, but I, I think it's it's been cool to be able to post like, oh, this um, update is up. I think it's been helpful. And then telling people when I'm going to go live. I'm just fiddling around with the chat right now. I wish I could make it smaller. But. Okay. So Todd went out for a walk in the forenoon. Edna worked on an attic door over at her house this evening. Not any news. So what's happening now, Edna was, uh, Todd was helping 
her build her house or he was doing it seems like most of it for or with her and now she's doing a lot of it on her own which is sad but she seems pretty capable which is good and then i actually did find a picture of the house and i was showing everybody yesterday um this is not what i need i need hold on bear with me people and places in the weatherman diaries so um i was showing people yesterday on the test live all of my slides here I'm a bit of a slide freak, but <laughs> I've got pictures of Todd and Edna's houses here. I found them from old tax records and the assessor's office. So we've got um, Edna's house here, and this is Todd's house, and they're right next to each other. So they are on the same property, which is kind of what we had figured. Just judging by the way the entries were written, it seemed like her house was on the same property. You can't see the whole typing on the screen. Um, is it too narrow? I can see it on my iPad. That's why it's, you can see what I'm writing. Sarah, if you can screenshot and send me a picture on Instagram, that would help. I think it might be if you could move it slightly to the right. Uh, okay. Hold on, I moved you guys like that. I don't know if that really moved it much, but you were trying to look up some info on Edna, daughter, today. So you have all the census info on her. I have some census info on her. I don't, th I don't have everything, but the left side is cut off. Okay, so should I move it more over or is that better? More? Okay. How about that? You think it's fine? I think it might be slightly different on everybody's screen, unfortunately. Now it's good. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. Okay, thanks. Everyone's saying that's good. That's good. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, luckily I didn't have to do much to do that. Didn't, like, derail everything. Okay, so we will move on to Tuesday. You can't read the blue box because of the writing at the top. You know what? I don't really care as much about the blue box. I feel like I might get rid of the blue box for now. That was just an idea to like tell people what we're doing, but if it's gonna get in the way, I don't think we should bother. You can, I know you can see it well now, but it's like, it's in the way, right? Should I make it smaller? It looks very large on my iPad, but bottom, bottom right. Okay, if yeah, Ian's famous now, that's funny. It only blocks what you've already written. Okay, so what I've already written, I don't care about. I don't think I can, you can see the blue box now, can you? Did I move it all the way out? Oh my god, I'm, I'm, I don't care about the blue box. That's good, okay. Okay, so yeah, that's so weird that you can see it because I can't see it at all on my iPad, which is a problem because that's what I'm recording on. But I don't really, I don't care about it for recording purposes. I care about it for people to be able to see when they come in. Okay, so Tuesday, February 8th. Okay, um, I can zoom in on this one a little bit. It's actually really helpful to have the iPad here, though, because it's nice and big. So, a rather mild day. Todd walked down to the bridge by, what does that say? I almost wrote Edna automatically, but I don't know what that says. E. Does that say Edna? No, it doesn't. I don't know. If the normal one, you'll just get updates and you could... Oh, yeah, so if you're talking about the Discord, I'm sorry, I missed the... Oh, okay. What is the difference if I buy the supporter or the diary detective? So, um, the supporter one is just for people... I figured maybe, like, people didn't want to be part of the Discord, so the supporter one is, like, just if you wanted to donate, because people were talking about donating. I might just get rid of that one, because no one's done that one. There's nothing... You don't get anything for it. So, the diary detectives one... That's the one where you'll get into the um, the Discord group. 
But there is a free version of the Discord group where you can just get notifications and, like, updates and stuff. So that one's completely free. The link is in my bio for that, too. Um, Michaela says, do we know what Todd looks like? No, we don't know yet. We know what a couple of people look like in the diary. We have pictures of his... Well, we found pictures of his doctors, which is pretty cool. But we have pictures of his daughter, pictures of his son, even though the picture of his son is kind of hard to make out. Um, we've got pictures of his grandson, but none of him yet. So hopefully we will... Hopefully it will come together. You think that's a D? I... I bet Edna Jr. looks like him. Yeah, probably. Gutted that we can't get the stickers here in the UK. Oh, um, so if you, if you're talking about the little free sticker, of uh, the things lost and found sticker, hopefully you can see it. Yes, you can. Um, if you really want it, I will send it to you. Just send me your address. I just figured some people don't really care about it, so I wouldn't want to send them out if people don't actually care about it. But if you really want it, let me know. Um, Ursa's, it could be, yeah, E-A-R-S-A-S -S or Laura's. So what I would normally do for this, it's tough on live because as you know, I'm good until I move some things around and then I'm not good anymore. But what I would normally do on my, yeah, maybe it's Laura. Um, what I would normally do if I was researching on my own is I would control F in here which actually we can do this because the next, the entry before he uses a capital E. So I would look for a match for that E. I think that's an E, but if I look back here, yeah. So see the E on Edna, but that's clearly says Edna. So the next page does not say Edna, but I feel like, let me go back and forth. E, E, I feel like it's an E, definitely. And so he's talking about going to the bridge by this person's house. So I wonder if this is a long shot, but I've got a map on here. An old map of Fairfax, which has Todd Delaney's name on it. I don't know where the bridge would be, but I wonder if we could find that name which we might also be able to find that name on find a grave or something. It's hard to read the words, but I don't see an EA. Hold on, I'm still zoomed in now. I didn't see that name easily, but I wonder if we could, I don't know, if you guys don't like to do this kind of thing, if you just want to type, let me know, but now that I'm on my desktop, it's, like, so easy. Okay, so E-A-R-S-A. -A. Thank you, last but not Alice. Oh, okay, we've got some Ursas, actually. Did I look... Did I put Fairfax, though? I didn't. So I'm going to put... This is what I've been doing. Okay, so we've got none in Fairfax, but I wonder if we could say just Iowa. Looked like they were Iowa, so maybe that's a popular name in Iowa. There's an Ursa Thompson on Madison, Iowa. Okay, OMG, no way. You live 40 minutes from Cedar Rapids. That's awesome. Very cool. Some in Johnson. Yeah, so th we've got lots of Ursas. We could definitely... We could probably narrow it down if we had some more time. It's tough when we're on live. But we know this is kind of cool because we have a few clues here. We have very few clues, but it can actually be enough sometimes. We have the last name, the spelling, and we know that there's a bridge nearby. Maybe it's a railroad bridge. Maybe it's a bridge over water. I don't know. So we could definitely dive into that a little bit more. Maybe in our diary detectives group, we can get on that. We found Todd's doctors with very few clues, so it's possible that we could figure out who this person is and maybe even find pictures of them. So I'm going to keep going, but we can definitely, that's something that maybe we can make note of that and look for that in our little group. What time do the lives stay on till in UK time? I think you're in my time zone. Right oh, you're talking to Rachel. All I know is that I'm in Eastern time in the US and I usually stay on till like nine. I always want to stay on till 8.30 and I'm usually here till like nine. 
but the last few minutes is usually just chatting. 2.30 a.m.? Oh, I gotta move it up for you guys. In the summer, we can make it... In the summer, we can actually kind of tailor it to the Diary Detectives group. Like, we can, um... Oh, I forgot something today, yeah. So I can do a little poll in there and you guys can tell me what times don't work for you and I won't go live then. Okay. I like how we're starting to get to know each other in the chat too, that's cool. And definitely in that Discord group, we're starting to get to know each other and form a little team. Okay, so another nice day. Lloyd went through on his trip to Omaha. He, I think he's talking about the mail train because Todd works on the, the postal train. Not Todd, Lloyd, sorry. Todd and I went out in another one in front and waved at him. So there was an entry in late January where Todd even though it's really tough for him to walk right now, it's, he gets really, really tired. Um, he was able to walk down the street and go wave at his son as he went by on the postal train, which was just like a really sweet entry. I reread it yesterday and it just, it's one of those that just hits me and I think it hit all of you guys too, but um, so he's doing that again. That's really sweet. The other entry was just, I think it was because it was the first time it was like a surprise, but that's so sweet. This is like a, now a routine for him. Okay, so they walked over to the railroad and waved at him, and Edna worked in her attic again. She's been working in her attic for a while. She added insulation on one day, then she added a door. So she's been doing a little bit here and there. It's been a while since I could join. Is this still Cedar Rapids Diary or a different one? This is the same one. I wish Marilyn Monroe kept a journal, or did she? That would be so cool to read. Yeah, I mean, you never know. I know. So it does say something else here. Out in his front, I think he, she, like, um, made an error. Did I mess up out in... F I don't know. I think they just accidentally wrote his. You've been thinking about this family? Yeah, me too. This is really becoming a a big story, you know? I wish we had more. We have one more diary after this one, but I wish we had all of them because there were lots of them. Okay. So, on the 10th, the worst snowstorm we have had all winter. Did not snow very hard, but the wind blew hard. Temperature around 20 or 25 during the day. Would you be able to get the other diaries? I wish, but they were on eBay and they're gone by now. Unfortunately, I did reach out to the seller and ask, even though I knew it was a long shot, but it's, they're all gone. Okay. On the 12th, do we know if Edna Jr. had a diary of her own? We don't know. What do you think? I feel like if Todd was so into this, Maybe his family did have them too. Can you put the days on, please? Oh, yeah, sorry. Somewhere along the line, I stopped doing that. Okay. So, quite a cold day. Edna did not have to go to the bank today. She went to CR, which is Cedar Rapids, in the PM. Nellie came home with her in the evening. Lloyd and Francis, Roger, and David came 
out for a while. CR is Cedar Rapids. That is the city in Iowa, the, the biggest city that's close to where Todd lives. Todd lives in Fairfax, which is a really small town, and it was even smaller back then. And then um, when he, like, the, the Cedar Rapids is the bigger town nearby. Okay, so Francis, Roger, and David came out for a while. Lloyd took the ashes up and emptied them. I'll explain what Todd Delaney is and who Todd Delaney is in a second. Todd did not feel so good today. Todd Delaney is the writer of the diary. Thank you, Platypus. <laughs> he's a writer from, yeah, he's from Iowa. He wrote the diary. Uh, right now, his wife Edna is writing for him because he had a cerebral hemorrhage, and we're assuming that left him unable to write, which is really sad, but it seems like she's keeping up the diary for him. Awesome, you joined the Patreon. Welcome. Okay, I got the diaries from eBay. Okay, so Sunday, February 13th. A cold, yeah, just a random guy from Iowa. <laughs> Not anymore, though. He was a random man, and now we know a lot about him. Did they ever say what if they had... Oh, yeah, they do have a vehicle to go to town. They talk about driving in and out. And then they also, I guess, over there, the railroads are really interconnected, and it seems like his town is very much based on the railroad, so they do take the train in. But it seems like they drive a lot. It's about 20-minute drive, I think. An awesome random guy. He's been through so much. Yeah, it's pretty cool, though. It's, it is just a random diary, but there's a story within it. So, a cold wind today. Nellie was here in the AM and then came back again. And, oh, and was here for supper. We did not go out at all today, as Todd did not feel good, and it was pretty cold. You think the blue box was better at the top because it's blocking the longer entries now? Okay. I can't even see it on my iPad at all, so thank you for letting me know. I can make it, I can make the text smaller, if you can still read it. I don't know, like, what size font you guys can read, but on the, um phone, but I can't see it on my iPad at all because of the weird screen setup, but like maybe since the entries that I've already done are up there, is that okay? As long as it covers what we're not working on. Yeah, exactly. I can't see it at all though on my Computer that's good at the top, but the original size was better. Okay, so let me go back up a little bit. I don't remember what the exact size was, but let's see if th is that any better? I can hardly see it even on my computer. Is that way too big? Good for you. Thanks, Pat. Okay, someone had said someone asked a question. Oh, have I found any living relatives yet? I think so. I reached out to a few people on a couple of different um, platforms, Facebook, Ancestry, but I haven't gotten any replies. So I'm not sure. It looks like a couple of people have read and have chosen not to reply, so I'm not pushing that anymore. But if they don't reply after a little while longer, it's been a couple of weeks, so, you know, if I end up finding more people who might be related, I'll, I'll reach out to them and then I'll hang on to it for a little while and then if nobody is interested, I'll donate it to a... Um, historical society or something, or at least send them a digital copy. I think that would be cool. Okay, so you made sure to make your profile picture on Discord the same so you knew it was me. Awesome. Okay, thank you. That will be helpful because it's hard to keep track of all of the different usernames across platforms. It can be tough. Okay, so I'm going to go back. I got to get out of this screen and move your chat over. Okay. It's getting a little bit easier, this setup. I think, I definitely do like it more. I feel much more like I've got more space. 
how I had it before. I had my tripod set up right in front of me with my phone and everything behind it. And I was just looking through my phone at the comments. So this is actually much easier to navigate after I get used to the actual application because it's different. There's definitely a lot more going on than on the phone. Like you can move things around like you've been seeing. Okay, you think it's better too? That's good. And I think it's it's going a lot more smoothly now than yesterday in the beginning. It wasn't too bad yesterday though. I was pleasantly surprised. Right the day of the week. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. I, I don't know why I'm not doing that today. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, it's great being able to see everything that's happening. Yeah, before I feel like the text was kind of blurry. You couldn't see it all. I had to make it gigantic just to be able to um, read it at all. That's the other thing I can do to this text. I can make it smaller if, I don't know if this is a good size for you guys to read along on the phone, but I could make it smaller, but I kind of like it. Okay, so some snow. Yep, it's Valentine's Day here. Some snow today, rather blustery in the AM. See, that's why we call him the weatherman. He uses great descriptive words. Yeah, your day, Valentina. <laughs> but cleared out in the PM. PM. Todd did not feel very good today. So Edna took him in to see Dr. Nybert in the evening. So I can show, oh, I cleared up. Did I type it wrong? But cleared. Oh, cleared up. Okay. I feel like the baby of the discord being young. <laughs> no, we're all young. The discord just started the other day. Yes, Emily, that is the chiropractor. So I'm going to show him now. I was just going to tab over to this one. So all of these slides that I'm showing you guys, these are all on my website, which is linked in my TikTok bio. And that's where I dump all of the diary readings that we've done so far. I'm just trying to make it so that I'm not zooming in every time I click here. Okay, so I have a picture of Dr. Nybert. He is right here. Let's see if you can see him. I think you can see him. Um, he is a chiropractor. And Todd goes to see him and he works on his neck a lot. He seems to go to see Dr. Nyber a lot. And he worked in Cedar Rapids. So I found that picture along with all of these other doctors while working with Valentina on the diary discord group. You're having trouble with the discord invite. Discord invite. Can someone message me? Um, I don't know which one you're trying to get into. If you're trying to get into the free one, the link is in my link tree. I think you should just be able to click on the invite link and it's open. I don't have to approve anything. So you should just be able to get in there. You can also message me if like on um, Instagram, it's really hard to see the chat. That's because I'm just showing pictures. But I think when I go back over to this, it's a little easier. I wish I could change the color of the chat. It won't accept me the invite in your link. Okay, really? I wonder why. Hold on. I think if I open Discord, you guys won't even, it won't even pop up on your screen. So let me open it up. I specifically put in a link there that said it was good forever. Like it said, I would never have to put in a new one. Maybe there's too many people. The, the invite doesn't work. Okay. I can put in a new one. That's the other benefit of being on my computer. Okay. So I can go right in here now. We've got there's 28 people in here, so it was working. I can create a new link. I'm going to have to figure out how, but hold on. I figured this out before. Settings. No. Oh my God. If anyone knows Discord quickly, let me know. Because I have to kind of like fumble through here a little bit. Threads, notifications member list. Okay. Hold on. I think I figured it out. Invite people. Okay. It says your invite link expires in seven days, but I want to set this link to never expire. Copy. The other one was working. So that is weird. It does work. 
Same for you, it just says can't complete the action. Okay, well, I'll try to update it anyways. I know, technology, it's like always, I wonder why it would be blocking you from joining. Unless maybe there's just like a technical error on their end, but I'll just stick another link in there. It says it's never gonna expire, so this will be the new link. And if that doesn't work, then we'll figure it out another time. You just tried same result. Okay, maybe it's too many people clicking on it. I can try to join it from my second account just to check it. Whatever, I'm going to, I'm in my link tree right now and I'm changing it. So I don't know how long that takes to upload, but update, I mean, I don't think I have to save anything. It does, I changed it. So maybe in a couple of minutes, try again. It took you a few times, but you were able to get in. Oh, you can see my link tree right now. I didn't realize that I had my, that screen shared. Okay. Yeah. So you saw me just change it. I made sure I like went and undid it and redid it to make sure it was actually changing. So I guess just keep trying. Maybe too many people are clicking on it at once. Okay. So let me get out of, I have discord open still, so I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. And then like the extra rooms, that would be something you can join this one just with the link, but the other room would, would be Patreon would email you with a link. That one better work. So far it has. I almost didn't write the name of the day again. Tuesday, February. Okay. Quite a nice day. Uh, Mom Edna lived. She did? Oh, she lived until 91. I didn't, um, I didn't remember that or notice that, but. Edna the daughter lived until, or are you talking about 1991? Because Edna the daughter lived until the early 1990s. Or do you mean that the mother Edna lived until age 91? I don't know. So quite a nice day. Todd did not go out any. Oh yeah. Okay. So she lived until, so the age of 91. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. So Todd did not go out any less Hasley. I think that's what that says. Yep. That's what you think too, Emily. Okay. Less Hadsley brought fuel oil to Ma and came in and visited with Todd for a while. John Murphy. It might be Leo, yeah. It might be Leo. John Murphy did a little work on soft water pump. Okay, I have a question. I know what hard water is. Soft water must be a thing. Is soft water a thing in Iowa? Like, do they have a lot of hard water and they have special pumps to make it soft water? I don't really know what soft water is, but I'm assuming it's the opposite of hard water. Am I dumb? Um, the reason I ask is because when I went through on, I went on Google Earth to look through the town a little bit, and there's a place it's now, like there's a business called something soft water. You grew up with a water softener. Yes, in the Midwest, we have something called a water softener. Okay, cool. And then you found a Leo Hasley from Cedar Rapids. Okay, so that's a thing. I noticed that there was a business that was called soft water. So I was just, that kind of stuck in my mind. Cool. Okay. Wednesday. If you guys found things, send them to the Discord. Hard water is lots of minerals. Yeah, that's what I had. That's I knew that. So soft water must mean like like distilled water. No minerals. Or less of certain ones maybe. Okay, a nice bright day some snow. The discord's working. Okay, good. 
some snow out or on the ground, but it is melting today. How do you send to Discord? If you're in the, if you clicked on the link and it worked for you and you're in the, like the free Discord, you can message me. If you're in the Diary Detectives, you can send it in a group chat. Hard water means there's lots of lime scale in the water in Ireland. Yeah. Okay, I got a screenshot from Rachel. Hold on. I can't open the Discord right now. There's too much going on. But thank you. Okay. Thursday, February 17th, 1944. Dr. Herman. Okay, I feel like they spelled it differently than before, but I know his name is spelled with two N's, so I'm going to put that. Called this afternoon. It was a nice day. It was a nice, <laughs> it was a nice day. I have a picture of Dr. Herman too. Yeah, the entries are getting shorter. They seem to get, you know, like they go back and forth. Um, this is Dr. Herman. He is a, I'm going to zoom down, not zoom, but like scroll down. I can't. Hopefully you guys can see the full picture. It's hard on my iPad. I can only see half of Dr. Herman, but he was his, I think he was a surgeon. Yeah, he's a surgeon and he seemed to work closely with Todd after he had his cerebral hemorrhage. Although he's been seeing Dr. Nybert more now, the chiropractor. Okay. I've been going back and forth a little bit about what happened to Todd because it's very interesting, the entry before the that the entries stop. So there's one last entry with his handwriting and then the entries stop for two months. And then when they come back, it's his wife writing for him. So in the entry before they all end, the entry before he has the cerebral hemorrhage, he talks about going swimming in a quarry. And from what I know, you know, you hear stories about people diving into a quarry and it being too shallow and then getting hurt. And I was, you know, a lot of people also picked up on that and thought like, oh, did he get... Did he dive in? Did he get injured? And that's why he had this, this medical issue. But then on his death certificate, it says that it was caused by something to do with his arteries. So my gut says it was like a build up, a medical issue that was building up that maybe he didn't realize, or maybe he did know. I don't know. But then he's also going to a chiropractor and he's talking about how his neck hurts. And I'm like, maybe something, I don't know. You guys, you could share what you think if, I don't know. We don't really have much to go by, but it just seems really coincidental. And, you know, you can have a cerebral hemorrhage from hitting your head, I'm sure. But we probably will never know the details about that. But then it also, it does say the, um, in his death certificate, it does say it was arterial sclerosis. I can't say it, but it was something like that. So it sounds like something that built up over time. Um, so remember the yellow pages about the chiropractor? I think they promised more than they could deliver. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. So maybe he does talk about going because his um, neck was hurting. So at least there was an actual, you know, his neck was hurting, so he went to the chiropractor. But yeah, maybe he went thinking, like, he could fix some things that um, really weren't fixable by a chiropractor. Uh, Valentina and I were looking at old yellow pages ads, trying to look for the chiropractor. Um the picture of Dr. Nybert here and like info on him. And we found a lot of, or she found a lot of interesting ads for chiropractors back then. They definitely were trying to sell a lot of interesting things. Okay. Uh, your dad had that and died at 47. Your arteries hard, hard up. I'm sorry about that, Pat. Yeah, that's what, and that's what I thought it meant. So that doesn't really track with having an injury. That sounds like something more that would be something that builds up over time. Chiropractor and hemorrhage seems like a bad combo, yeah. He is about 60. It would be cool if his wife had a diary. Yeah, it would be. It seems like this diary is turning into hers. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Let's see. All right, Todd went down town this 
p.m. for a while. Rather cold this a.m. Oops. But warmed up during the day. Edna seems to write a.m. and p.m. a lot instead of morning and evening. Warning signs are pain in the neck and shoulders. He went on his own. I, yeah, maybe. Maybe he went downtown on his own. Okay. Okay, Saturday, February 19th. I can zoom out a little. I don't know if you guys can see all of it, but... Do you think after his hemorrhage, the handwriting got worse? Um, the handwriting changed because someone else started writing for him. I think this handwriting is much easier to read. I think everyone else who was on before would agree with me. It's hard right now for me to be able to show you because my camera is not going to focus, but this is what Todd's handwriting looked like. Am I going the right way or the wrong way? Oh, it's like it lags about 10 seconds for me to be able to see. See, it's really not going to be able to focus. So his handwriting was much longer and sharper and scratchier. And then as it went towards July 9th when he had his cerebral hemorrhage, it seemed like his handwriting got a little bit worse, but it's hard to tell. It kind of got worse and then got better. And then his wife started writing for him after the two months of no entries. Her handwriting is much more loopy and much, I think, more, like, spread out. We know that he was about 61 or 62 years old. That makes some of these entries very ominous. Solo. Okay, you tagged someone. Warning signs. Yes, I know. That's, that's very true. Um, hold on. The comments moved when I was reading something. I think he couldn't write and was dictating. Yeah, I think at this point he was dictating his entries. He may have had paralysis in his hand, yeah. It sounds like afterwards it was hard for him to walk. So it's, I'm sure all of those other motor tasks, he wasn't able to, you know, it took him a while to get back. That's probably why he wasn't doing, they weren't writing anything for two months. They were probably just trying to get through that. Um, and that's okay if you're late. I'm recording it on my iPad. So it'll be, all of that stuff will be on YouTube when does the diary get up to? This diary goes until the end of 1944. We started with the 1943 one, like, about a month ago. And then now we're on to 1944. We have all through 1944, and then I do have one from 1947, too. So that's a few years after, but that's the last one I have. So we'll read through this one, then we'll read 1947. And then, I don't know. I've got a couple of other projects lined up that we could choose from and is this all Todd this is it's hard to say because yeah these are all Todd's um family we know Todd does pass away in 1944 so the 1947 one I'm not sure if that's still the wife Edna that will be writing or the daughter Edna I don't know but it's definitely still the same family I flipped through quickly and a lot of the same names are there so it belongs to the same lot okay so a real nice day Edna went to CR in the afternoon. Nellie came out with her and stayed all night. Lloyd went through on his train, oh no, on his run to Omaha this afternoon. But I guess they're still talking about the train even though I, I wrote train and said run. All right, so one thing that I thought of that I didn't say before was um, it was talking about how Edna didn't have to go to the bank, and Edna worked at the bank. I'm not sure if at this point she had started yet, but I'm assuming she did if he's talking about having to go to the bank. All right, Sunday. A very nice day. Have I contacted the family asking if you can get the ones that were Edna's during the death year? I have contacted the family, I think. I've contacted possible family members just to tell them that I had these diaries and 
offer to give it back, give them back to them after I was, you know, after we finished this, I would love to send them back. Um, I haven't gotten any responses from them. I did contact the person on eBay that sold these diaries because when I bought them, there were like 15 more of them. Probably not 15. But there was, there was a lot of them. And I bid on a bunch of them, but I only got these. There were diaries between 44 and 47. Yes, there was like every single year, which is so sad because we would have those puzzle pieces. But I was talking to my dad about it and I was saying, you know, I bet the 1940, like 45, that probably sold. It was all bidding on them. So that one probably sold for more. I got outbid. People wanted that one because it was the end of World War II. So that one probably was, like, a really hot diary. Like, everyone wanted it or something. Because I didn't get 1945. I don't remember which ones exactly I bid on, but I bid on a lot of them. And I just, you know, we didn't get them all. <laughs> I don't remember if there was a 39 one exactly, but maybe I could go back and find it. I don't know if those old eBay listings are still there, but I could look. But it would probably just make me sad. Um, and my YouTube account is the same as my TikTok. So it's Things Lost and Found, and it's linked in my bio. So if you click on the link tree, there's a link to my YouTube there. It looks like this one here is talking about the war again. Hold on. I'm, I'm still reading chats, though. Did he or his kids go to war? He didn't. I'm not sure about his kids. Would the seller connect you to the other buyers? I don't know. I, I do remember the seller's name and I've contacted them and asked if by chance any of the diaries didn't sell, but they did. They're all gone. But I guess I could, I mean, it couldn't hurt to send another message and be like, hey, can you message the people who bought the diaries and let them know? But I don't think, I don't think that like that's, I don't know. It's probably against Etsy's, not Etsy. I'm on Etsy. That's why I'm saying that. eBay's terms and conditions, you know, how like they, they have rules about how you can talk to like you, the people who buy. I guess it couldn't hurt. If you could find the buyers, you could try to pay them to borrow the diaries and scan them. Yeah, I, I would love to do that, but I don't want to be like, I don't know. I guess it, it couldn't hurt to send a message and ask. And maybe if I show the person what we're doing, I don't know. How do families lose such personal items or be lost? Albums, journals, etc. A lot of times it's estate sales. Like when they're cleaning out a house, it seems they'll miss a box and things like this just happen to be in the box. I'm sure all of these diaries were together in an attic somewhere, you know? Yeah, it can't hurt. It can only embarrass me, I guess. Okay, so a very nice day. Kit and Pauline, who we still haven't found out who Kit and Pauline are, came out this PM... Nelly, Nelly was here for supper. That just reminded me of, um, what's it called? Little House on the Prairie. I used to love that show, but I hated Nelly. Nelly was here for supper. We did. Kit does sound like the American Girl doll, yes. <laughs> we did not go out at all today. I feel like people who buy these are as interested as you and wouldn't find it weird. I guess that's true. You loved Laura. Me too. I wanted to be Laura. Half pint. <laughs> Some people just don't care. My husband brought home two war vet flags. Oh, that's sad because their family was throwing them away. They will probably regret that someday. Me too. I don't think anyone would be interested in the future. I think people would be interested in what we're doing now. Like if you're talking about writing a journal, I think. I think it's worth it. I started keeping a journal and I can show you guys another time because it's like all the way across the room, but it's um, a five-year diary, which you do find a lot of old five-year diaries that they're selling, but this is a newer one. It's basically each page has a section, has five different sections. So it's like for January 1st, you've got five spaces and the first year through you fill in the first space of each day. And the second year through, you fill in the second space and then you just keep adding to it. Yeah. So you got the five-year journal and you're doing it. That's awesome. I, I do that every day now. Like that's something that I actually stick to. And it's really cool to get to look back at what you were doing the year before. And it's not too overwhelming because it's like a small little spot that you have to fill in. It's nothing too crazy. 
Kit is Catherine, Todd's sister. Oh! Kit is Catherine, Todd's sister. Pauline was her daughter. Pauline Murray. Thank you. Mystery solved. Am I typing a record book of old diaries? I am just typing out this diary for now. That's cool. Okay. So now we know Kit and Pauline. I'm going to have to... I'm going to put this. I didn't know that Catherine was a nickname... Or Catherine was like a... Kit was a nickname for Catherine. I didn't know that. How much did I buy them for? I'm wanting to try and find some that are good, reasonable, pr reasonable price. That's hard to find on eBay. <laughs> It can get ridiculous. People put things up for... It's just, like, a lot. And then the, when they're bidding... When the items are bidding on, they're, like... They go for way too much sometimes. For me. I mean, I don't know. It depends who you are, what you collect, and how much you want to spend, really. But I... For my purposes, I can't justify spending a ton. Um, but what was I saying with that? So... These diaries, I don't remember exactly what I paid for them, each of them, because they were all separate listings from the same person. And like I said, there were like 10 of them or more. So I was bidding on a few of them at once. I think a couple of them went for like, I think I got them for maybe 12 to $15. And then another one, I paid upwards of like 25 or something. I'll have to look more closely. I always forget to look, but we could do a fundraiser. So I started a Patreon page and that's been kind of, that's worked so far as a little fundraiser. And it also, you can get something for it. So if you subscribe to the Patreon, you can be in a little discord group. We have a, a club kind of on there where we've been researching together and it's been really um, productive actually and nice to get to know you guys. So the, how much is it? The um, Patreon is $5 a month. I could also put together something else if people wanted to just like throw a couple bucks in or something here and there. I can put together a Venmo or something. But I figured that would be... I, I wanted you guys to get something for it, you know? So that's why I made a Patreon. Don't forget Pauline is Kit's daughter. Yes, I'll write that in there. This is all like new to me, so I'm still kind of figuring out how to set it up and what to do. Oops, missed the notification and lost track of time. Have I missed anything significant? Um, I don't know. You guys, anyone want to catch her up? I, it's hard for me when I'm typing to remember. I'm just adding one thing. Kit. That's a note for myself. So we figured out who Kit and Pauline are. So that's cool. Um, Lloyd went back on his mail train and um, Todd waved to him again. So that was cute. And then it's just a lot of the same, like, um, Todd's not feeling well. Some days he's walking, some days he's not walking. I don't know if there was anything else. I think this entry might be significant that we're about to read because I see something at the bottom that's doesn't look too good. So, okay, I'm moving the chat out of the way. It's hard to keep everything on my screen. So, oh, this is the same entry. We just didn't finish it. Okay. So we did not go out at all today. Florence. Florence Fox. I called this, I just said afternoon, but it says evening. And brought rugs, rags for Ma to make a rug. A memorial service. Ugh. Was held at Walford this PM for Frank Svoboda or Svoboda, I forget. We did figure that out. Who was killed in Africa? Okay, so now I have to refresh my memory because there was just someone who was wounded and I'm pretty sure it was a Svoboda, right? Was that the same person? Let me see. Oh no, he was, yeah, okay, so that's the man who, who had, um, who was killed. There was another person recently who was wounded. Uh, here he is, John Sheeler, yeah. So... 
we found out he had passed away. It was January 15th, I think he... Yeah, it was January. So now they're having a memorial service for him. I thought it was another person, so... Okay. Interesting that the article says Italy, but she says Africa. Yeah, that's true. I wonder what's going on with that. Go back here... Yeah. Interesting. This diary is during the war. It's 1944. I guess I can fix the spelling of his name now. I couldn't really read it in the diary. It is an O. Your earphones died. Is it the same guy? He, it, it's the same one that he was uh, mentioned in February, but he passed away in January. Yeah, this is the same guy who Todd was talking about before. There are a few Svobodas. Is Kit related to the guy who died in war? I'm not sure. Kit Molly came over for supper. Yeah, I'm not sure. I wonder if the entry where he talked about him. No. I was wondering if the entry where he talked about him, like, finding out he passed away mentioned Kit, but I don't think it does. I'm wondering, Astro, why you say that. Are you just asking because you're curious, or do you have something that makes you think that they are? Because we could look into that more. I could go on Ancestry and figure that out now that we know who Kit is. Kit is Catherine, so. wonder if he was injured in Africa and transported to Italy. Yeah, maybe. It was talking in the beginning, in the 1943 diary, it was talking about a, like, a battle in Africa. All right, so I'll keep going. Maybe we can come back to this if anyone has any more input about his relation. Because I'm assuming he's either a close family friend or he is related because, um... Oh, awesome, Nikki. Welcome to the club. <laughs> this family search says he died in Italy. Yeah, that's in that's interesting. That it would say two different things. I wonder maybe she just got confused or... Um, maybe he was stationed over there and she assumed. Thank you, Rachel. You got it. I was saying something and I totally dropped off, so I don't know what I was talking about before. But I'm just going to keep going. That's the problem with lives. I kind of go on, like, tangents halfway through a sentence. But Okay, so Tuesday, February 22nd. This is a longer one. I'll zoom in a little bit. D I think that says Chet and Alice. Yeah. And children. You have an ancestry find my Oh, okay, you have tabs open ready to search. That's awesome. Thank you. Now that I'm on my desktop, it's a little bit easier for me to tab over and search. Before when I was on my phone, it was like impossible because I was using my computer just to project the words and I was using my iPad so I couldn't do any extra research. Now I can sort of do it, but it is helpful when you guys can, you guys can do it much quicker than me. All right. Chet and Alice and children called here. This AM. What does the front of the diary look like? Just curious. I can show you. I could hold it up, but it doesn't focus very well. But I have on my website this little slides going where I'm putting all of the transcriptions so far. So this is what the 1944 diary looks like. But I want to show you, I'll hold this up. I have both of them here. Hold on, it's stuck. The size is different. So the 1943 one is a lot taller. 1944 is a lot shorter. But they are the same exact font and the same, like, leather pattern. What's interesting is... The, you had one you sold a while back from your collection. The writing looked similar. Oh, interesting. Um, what's interesting is the 1947 one is completely a different color, different size, different font. So 
what's kind of like here's what I'm thinking because I overthink it, but it seems like Todd was a like daily diary writer. Like this was his thing. He must have, especially because so many were being sold just year after year. I don't think this was like a one off thing. This was his. This is what he did. So he probably had a 1944 diary ready to go during 1943. Like, he was probably writing in 1943 and then bought the 1944 one, ready to fill it out, and then turns out he couldn't because he got sick and then his wife did for him. Then, after he passed away, maybe his lineup of diaries that he was purchasing ran out. This, this is all just um, me coming up with stuff, but this is just, like, what I'm thinking. Um, and then that's why the 1947 one is different. Like, they continued his tradition of writing diaries, but they started to look different because they didn't have the same, like, I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe every year was different. I don't really remember in the eBay listings. It's just interesting that these look so similar, and they have the same exact text on them font. Okay. This is really cool, by the way. Thank you. Have you been transcribing only a single person's diary or multiple people? I started this whole hobby transcribing a diary from 1917 and doing research on her. Her name was Anglesey. And that's like on my TikTok page. That was my main thing. It's still my main thing. I've gotten a little bit caught up in this diary because it's been so fun to do it with all of you. But I've been able to research so much about her life. It's like I could write a book about that. Um... So that's how it got started. I did her diary. And then after that, I started to look for more because I was thinking like, oh God, when this ends, what am I going to do? Because this, I really, really enjoy it. Like I'll spend hours reading and researching. And then I got these diaries on eBay. So these are like my second diaries that I'm going through. Second, third, and fourth, I guess, because there's three of them. But I plan, I already have more that are ready to go for when we're done with this, but it's, it's cool that we've got three of these because I feel like if we had just read the first diary and we knew, oh, he passes away in 1944, it just, that would have been tough to just stop there. So it's cool that we have the three. And I'm from Massachusetts. 1944 diary might have been shorter because of the war. Paper might have been hard to come by. Oh, that is true. I hadn't thought about that. See, there's so many different there's so many, it's like reading between the lines. I said that yesterday, like literally, there's so many different factors to consider. Okay. So February 22nd, I feel like you could spend your whole life just researching one of these diaries because then you could go through and read the newspaper from every single day and get perspective on that. It's just, it's really interesting to put it all together. So Chet and Alice and children called here this AM for a short while. Chet was to leave for the army tonight. Supposed to leave for CR, which is Cedar Rapids in Iowa tonight at six. Lloyd, Francis, so I guess just Lloyd, Francis were here this afternoon. They brought some groceries. They've been doing that a lot. Lloyd and Francis. Lloyd is Todd's son and Francis is Todd's daughter-in-law, Lloyd's wife. They've been bringing groceries a lot and Lloyd's been kind of taking care of the house they brought some groceries out a very dismal day. We don't know Chet and Alice, but the name Alice sounds familiar, and I bet it's somewhere in the family tree. I could, um, hold on, I have the Delaney family tree open here. The name Alice, okay, here's Alice. Alice is his other his sister, so I bet she's married to a Chet. It's hard on, um, because it's like a windowed view, I can't really see anything. So I haven't, like, done any real research on all of his family, but I bet if we scroll through here, we would see the name Chet pop up. Oh, we've got Leonard, though. There was a Leo, right? I wonder if that is the Leo. Helen could be, he talks about a Helen a lot. I don't know what age Helen was. So, like, I could get really into this. 
but I probably won't spend a lot of time going through it, but this could be Leah. Wait, did you say she was dead by then? Oh, yeah, 1932. So I guess that's not Alice. Yeah, I did say that. I didn't... I'm not, like, looking at everything, so... Oh, this person's research information is unavailable. I think my internet connection's not great because I'm streaming. Okay, so... Yeah, I don't know. I just saw the name Alice, and we were talking about Alice, so I was like, oh, and that's probably where I saw her name before. So I don't know. There's Catherine. And she, I guess, has a daughter named Pauline. And then who else was I looking for? Chet and Alice. So I can search the tree, but this is just the tree that I made. I only got one Alice in here, and I've got no Chets so far. So we could do some more searches of other people's trees that they've built, but... This is just kind of where I'm keeping track of stuff, so I don't, I definitely don't have it complete. Um, you think it said she had a child named Alice, too. Let me see. And I'm just going by the hints here, because I don't really know anything about her. We've got Helen... Now, I wonder if we could look in, let's look in the, if they have a census from 19, like the latest census. So she died in 1932. So if they did a 1930 census, do they have that in there? Oh, we've got a obituary. Maybe we can read it. See how addicting this is? Like I, I go down rabbit holes. Okay, this is her husband, but it would still mention if they had a daughter, Alice. So he was born three miles from Cedar Rapids on a farm and spent his entire life farming. He was married to April 11th to Alice Delaney. Yep. And she died in 1932. Okay. Methodist Church of Fairfax. They talk about that church actually. Um, okay. Yes, you're right. So actually interesting Two daughters, Mrs. W.J. Sedlicek. Is Wes Sedlicek the husband of this woman? Maybe. And Wes Sedlicek, sorry guys, uh, Wes Sedlicek died the year before, and he was mentioned in the diary, that's why. And Miss Alice Parkin, both of Fairfax. Amanda. I really hate how old um, newspaper articles list women as just Mrs. and their husband's name. I guess this one didn't do that, so that's good. But a lot of times, you don't even, they don't have any part of their own name in there, and that just bothers me. But it looks like this is actually, I can't speak about this one, because it looks like they actually do have Jane, their actual names, but it was probably Leo earlier, short for Leonard. Yes, it probably was. So this is probably Alice then. So if Alice... We don't have, like, a birth date of the daughter yet, but I'd have to, like, fiddle around in here, and usually once I add people in, it will give me hints about them. So let me see. Sometimes I'll just accept a bunch of hints, but let's go to... No, oh, not that. Family. Add. Yes, that would make Alice Todd's niece, and I wonder... If she's married to Chet. You're catching up after a while of not tuning in. Do we know what the weatherman fell ill with? Yes. On, yeah, see, this really isn't loading for me. On July 9th or July 10th, um, Todd had a cerebral hemorrhage. And we know that because his death certificate, he ended up passing away from the same thing. I guess it happened again. But on his death certificate, it actually says that on July 10th, 1943, he had his first cerebral hemorrhage. So we know that that's why he stopped writing. Census records will list the whole family with ages at time of the census. Yes, you're right. I was trying to look. I don't know. It's like really hard to do this on live. It's a lot of pressure, but. This also, as you can see, is not loading at all. Like, it doesn't even have her name. But if I go back in here, maybe I can see. I was trying to find, like, the latest census 
that she was in. So if I go to 1920, she was 44 then, so she probably already had her children. Yes, yeah, there she is. So there is Leonard, Alice, Helen. Okay, I wonder, that must be the Helen that he's talking about a lot. He goes to visit Helen and then Alice. So they were, is this the age? Yeah, so Helen was 19 in 1920 and Alice was seven in 1920. So that makes sense. Yeah, that's probably them that he's talking about. Yeah, we finally know who Helen is too. So I'm going to, for myself, I'm just going to put this link it's probably a better way to do this, but I'm going to stick that in there and click on it again later and put those people in the, uh, on the website. There's the website, but maybe we can find more info on them. If anyone in the diary detectives, if you guys want to do some research and try to find pictures of Helen or, um, Alice, the newspaper article for whose obituary says a quick illness, I think. Are you talking about Todd? There's Ursa right above. Oh, really? Right above where? Oh, in the census? That's cool. Hold on. Let me go back. Yes, that's so cool. I love finding those similarities. I, I found something similar. I dig through an old trash pit in my woods with like old buttons and all things from, you know, it dates back to before the Civil War. I found some buttons. So Basically, I've been trying to figure out whose stuff that is, and I find that a lot in records, like, near my street, like, I find other people recurring who lived nearby, and it's just cool to get to learn who those people were, too. So, do you have a list of all the names mentioned in the diaries? No, I could do that on my people and places slide. If that's helpful for you, I can do that. Um... Let me, I want to look at these two because Knickerbocker, that's one that I've seen on the old maps. That's cool. S is that strong? I think that might be strong. Oh, story. Yup. He talks about a story, Mrs. Story, who passes away. Russell, like these are all his neighbors that he talks about. That's really cool. See, another, another, like, deep dive we could get into just looking at this census data and recognizing names. Isn't that crazy that we've been, like, there's a Seltzer. We know that last name. We know Dvorak. That's so cool. Bowler, we've heard that name. It was a small town, so Gibson. Oh, hey, here's Gibson. That is um, his mother-in-law and his father-in-law, Amos Gibson and Emma Gibson. And he talks about Blanche, too. Wow, I didn't realize how much we would be able to find just here because the name Blanche is brought up a lot. So we know who Blanche is now. I just, I'll forget to add these things in, so I'm just putting those links and I'll click on them and be like, why did I save that? But that's really cool. So I know that um, the Gibsons lived nearby. Sorry if this is boring. I'm just going to keep scrolling a little bit because this is cool. Boland. We know that name. Yeah, Blanche. Beeb. That might be Beeb. I've seen that name in the old maps. He hasn't talked about a Beeb, but I've seen it. Yeah, that's really cool. Delaney. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> there he is. That's so cool. That's awesome. That's our guy. Salek, yep. Is this Vavra? No, there's one, there's a Vavra that he talks about. But that's cool that that's, um, that's Todd and Lloyd and Edna when Edna was 10 years old. Going on a little um, adventure here in the census. So if you guys like this, we can do more research together on live. I said it yesterday, though. Sometimes research just doesn't result in anything. So it can be a little bit more boring than... Oh, you saw Nellie? It can be a little bit more boring than just, you know, 
our usual reading, having like a plan. A simple man in Iowa now has people all over the world invested in him. Yeah, I know. That's really cool. Okay, so where did you see Nellie? It's going to be hard to figure that out. Did you see her last name? Not sure if it was R. Nellie. Was it at the bottom? At the top? Up a little? I'm going to like wait a little bit because it takes a while for it to catch up for you guys up more. Just tell me when to stop. <laughs> Someone's saying at the top, but I'm going to wait. Should I go up more? I'm going to go up more. It was the second entry. Okay. Up, up. up. Why don't I see it? Cahill? Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, hang on a sec. Oh, that's his wife, though. Nellie Cahill, Daniel's wife. So, hey, I mean, maybe sometimes... Maybe sometimes when they say Nellie, they're talking about this woman. But it seems like the Nellie that we found before was really good friends with Edna... And this would be, this woman would be Edna the wife's age, not Edna the daughter's age. So I think this, maybe sometimes when we're reading Nellie, it's actually Nellie Cahill and it's not Nellie Edna's Nellie, Edna daughter's Nellie. This is so confusing. But I think that at least Cahill is pronounced Cahill. Oh, okay. I've always heard it Cahill, but interesting, Cahill. Um... What I'm trying to say is maybe sometimes when we're reading Nellie, it's actually this Nellie. Yes, because Nellie the friend stayed the night sometimes. Yes, I know. I think that when they're, I think we're definitely, we've nailed down the Nellie who is the daughter Edna's friend. But this is a possibility that it looks like they lived right next door. So it's possible that this Nellie was friends with the wife Edna, which is, just makes things so much more confusing. So many from Ireland in the live. Yeah, that's interesting. I've got a few people in here from Ireland. <laughs> what are you all doing up at 1 a.m.? <laughs> I don't know. Nellie the friend stayed the night many nights. Yes, that's true. Most nights. Yeah, you're right. We do know her last name because they talk about Miss Kruger. But sometimes he just says Nellie. So maybe when he's just saying Nellie, sometimes he's talking about this Nellie. I don't know. And for all of you who are staying up really late, thank you. I'm sorry. Um, maybe I was talking about before because I'm a teacher. And yeah, Colleen, you're from Ireland too. <laughs> um, maybe during the summer, because I'm a teacher, I can come on a little bit earlier. I think when the wife is writing about her, she says Nellie, and when Todd says, he says Miss last name. Yeah, that's true. Night shift. <laughs> Florence Fox was on that page. Oh, really? That's interesting. That's cool. On this page? It's funny because when you're looking for a specific person on the census, a lot of times I won't bother to read who's above and below, but it's cool when you get to start um, recognizing. Okay, so here's um, Florence Fox. That's awesome. It's 7 p.m. for you. Yeah, me too. Well, actually, it's 8 for me now. Not too early. You're early enough for Australia. Is it? It's like totally opposite on, in Australia, right? It's 24 hours difference from me. It's 7.58 p.m. right now. Is it 8 a.m.? Oh, it's 8 p.m. for you, too. Interesting. Is Nellie from CR? Yes, Nellie is from CR. Sarah, I'm probably going to be on until 8.30. Sometimes I stay on a little longer than that. I, like, plan for 8.30 and then I'm on longer, but that's the, the range, like, the about time where I'm going to log off. <laughs> Between 8.30 and 9, I guess. It's 10 a.m. Okay, I'm going to keep reading, I think. But this is really, this has been a cool deep dive in the census. We can spend... More time doing that. Hey, Audra. Okay, so Tuesday, February 22nd. That's where we left off. So I'm going to, did we finish this? No, we didn't. Okay, I guess I'll just, this is like embarrassing how I can't figure out how to save that better, but whatever. 
Um, I'll click on these links later and it will remind me of what I need to add. So a very dismal day. Again, with his very descriptive words about the weather. Um, it really, you know, the, the name, the weatherman, I like came up with that right away because it was just a pattern in the entries and we didn't know his name, but he really has lived up to that nickname more than I was expecting. A very dismal day. It rained most of the day. The snow thawed a lot. Mrs. Sheldon. Yeah died today. Chet's name is Chester, Alice's husband, so Todd's niece. Okay. I'm going to put this and we'll find him. Okay, so we can then also find Mrs. Sheldon. It seems like because it was such a small town, what's happening is lots of these people that he's mentioning who I was assuming it was just friends or neighbors, a lot of them are family because over time, children of one family marry children of another family, and then they're all kind of intertwined. Um, so we could look up Mrs. Sheldon because she died. We know her death date. So if we go on to find a grave, we don't know her first name, but we know her last name, and we know she died in 1944 and probably in Fairfax. So if we search that, we might get... No, we don't have it. Okay, but maybe if we expand, maybe it's not Fairfax. Maybe it's just Lynn County. Yep, there she is. So she must have not been buried in Fairfax. She was buried in Cedar Rapids. So Myrtle Ivy Mowers Sheldon. 22 February. Is that correct? Oh, I froze for a second. Sorry. Am I back? Are we on February 22nd? Yes. Okay, so that matches perfectly. I froze for a second. Just let me know when I'm back. I'm frozen. Yeah, I'm frozen. Mm. I was good for a second, but then I looked at my own iPad and I was frozen. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so what I was just doing was looking at... Mrs. Sheldon, because we know her death date, so I was finding her on Find a Grave. You like the name so much, Ivy and Myrtle. I know. I like it, too. I like Ivy a lot. So this is her Find a Grave page. I think he's mentioned Charles Sheldon before. Maybe not. Maybe. No, because he died in 1926. That wouldn't be. That wouldn't make sense. But anyways, this matches perfectly. It's it's always nice when things match up and confirm because if it was just her name and the year, we couldn't be 100% sure, but this is the exact date that he says that she was, that she died. So we've got that. We do have a picture of her daughter, it looks like. Uh, Lily Bell, that's cute. That was her sister's name, Lily Bell. And their last name was Mowers. That should have been Todd's last name with all the mowing that he did. Okay, so on Find a Grave, there's not a picture of her, but my next step would be to search Ancestry. And something that you guys, if you're on Ancestry, something that I didn't realize at first was you should always check, especially with the um, 1917 diary that I read with all the people who lived in Brooklyn, and they were pretty rich, so they all had passports. Um, always check the passport information for pictures. Because there's a couple of ways I'll show you what I mean because she's probably not going to have anything, but I'll just show you like where you would look. So if you search the person, it'll automatically like put in everything that you know about them. There are ways... Oh, it's not going to work because it's like windowed mode. I wonder if I do this. Hold on. It didn't really do anything. Okay. Well, anyways, actually you can see it. So over here, if you click on pictures, that's one way to obviously look to see if there's any pictures of the person. It looks like there's private pictures of her, so we can't see them, but you know, I mean, I could look through these and see which one was actually her or whatever, but those pictures are, are great, but sometimes there's nothing there. And one other place where you can look for pictures is in, if you go to immigration, and you go to 
there's one that says, okay, border crossings and passports. So the passport applications, see, these are from Brooklyn. That's funny because that's what a lot of the ones I was researching before are from. But a lot of these passport applications have pictures in them and they're just kind of hidden. Like you don't realize they don't show up as pictures but I don't know. That's just like a tip for you. This is fascinating. Oh, thanks. I'll see you later. Um, they went to Ireland. Yeah. I don't know if these are the same people, but anyways, that's just a tip I have for you. If you're like into ancestry. Okay. Let me put this back where it was. Hopefully it goes right back where it was. Good. Okay. I think we should read a few more cause we haven't actually made it through February yet. Maybe we'll make it to March and then what's been happening more and more that's really cool is we've been talking more in the chat, which I really like. So it's okay that we're not trucking through as much as we used to, especially because I don't want this to end. <laughs> so it's okay that we're taking our time and we're really able now that we know more about these people, we're really able to spend time researching and putting the pieces together together like on live, which is really cool. Thank you for sharing the live and thank you everyone for the likes and send, you know, everything that you're sending here. I can't see it easily cause it's on my iPad, but I appreciate everything. Um, okay. So let's do, you really enjoy seeing the process. Okay, good. I'm glad you enjoy it. Sometimes it can be not as like fruitful as you hope, but that's just the nature of doing this kind of thing. So Quite a nice day. Snow still thawing. Todd walked downtown a while. This PM. That's good. He got out and walked. Okay. And then this one is blank. Thursday. February 24th. This one's not blank. Okay, Friday, February 25th. Okay, so Mrs. Sheldon was buried today and we just found her. Edna went to the funeral. She went up and called on Kit afterwards. Wonder if the wife didn't feel well enough the day before. Yeah, maybe not. I would love to know how to pronounce your name. That's a pretty looking name. And you said you were from Ireland, right? Is it? Oh, I'm not going to try it. It's cool. I like all the vowels. <laughs> oh! Ifa? Ifa. Oh, that is not what I would have guessed. That's cool. That's very cool. I was like, oof, that's how I would probably try, but I, I knew it didn't sound right. That's very cool. Is that a common name over there? Or is that a unique name? Aoife. <laughs> you love my lives. Thank you. Typical Irish names. It's cool that typical Irish names over there are, they seem to me like, like rare. I don't know. Like, um, Sir Sharonin. Is Sersha a popular name. You love hearing people try to pronounce Irish names. Yeah. You know what though? I could get you back with some Massachusetts towns <laughs> and I can't pronounce Irish names, but you wouldn't be able to pronounce Irish towns. Maybe, I mean, um, Massachusetts towns. Maybe you would though, because a lot of Massachusetts towns are English. Like from, um, England. My kids are Aaron and Sean. Sersha is also very common. Yeah. Cool. They are rare for us too, but I've seen videos of people pronouncing. Yeah. Your name is French and people struggle with it. Okay. So I'll try. Is it Calais? Calais? Because it within French, wouldn't the S be silent? I bet people say callous all the time. Okay, let me keep going. So she went up. I can't even pronounce Massachusetts. I did take a few years of French. So I, when you said French, 
that's actually probably how I would have pronounced it anyways, like Calais or Cali. But um, when it, when you said French, that gave me a hint. It's the model of a car in Australia. Love all these names. Yeah. My name, Addie, when I was growing up was a rare name. Like I never met anyone else named Addie, but now it's popular. I have quite a few students named Addie. And it's weird because, you know, you grow up and I never, if I heard the name Addie, I knew someone was talking to me. And now it's not like that. Now it's like they could be talking to a few different people. You would have thought it was short for Addison. Mine isn't. Mine is just Addie. But a lot of the Addies that I have are short for Adeline or Addison. Okay, so she went up and called on Kit afterwards. Thank you. <laughs> Where did I leave off? Um, it got very foggy and rainy looking. Towards rainy looking. I like that. I know exactly, like I can picture that. Lloyd went into Chicago today. Like not raining, but looking like it's ready to rain. Dark. You like that it's just Addy, it's different. Thanks. Yeah, that is one thing about it. Like, there are a lot of Addies nowadays, but there's there's not a lot of just Addies, you know. It was kind of funny. In college, that was the first time I ever met someone in the same, like, friend group that had the name Addie. And she was at a line. She's at a line, I think, but she goes by Addie. But one thing, I was, like, so mad because <laughs> my name is actually Addie, right? And, um... I was, I like joined in the friend group, I guess, after she did. So they called me Other Addie. <laughs> and I was like, no, that is so sad. <laughs> but it was okay. I just never had a taste of that. But I guess that's kind of like being the, the kid in class, like having the same name as someone else. And you have your um, last name, like initial. Like Ryan C and Ryan G, you know? I just had never had that experience before. I was always just so used to being the only one. It should have been addition. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I was one of five Rosies in your school. Wow. <laughs> that's so funny. You had four Aoife. Okay, hold on. Did I, is it Aoife? I forget now. In your class alone. My name is Anna. Everyone asks what my full name is. Yeah, that's annoying sometimes. It's different. It depends on how they phrase it. It's like if they say, oh, Addie, is that short for something? And then you say, oh, no, it's actually just Addie. But I hate when they say, what's your real name? No, what's your first, your, what is your full name? What's your real name? That is my real name. There was one time when I was working, yesterday I was talking about working in a gift shop. That was my first job. And the manager there or the owner, not the manager, the manager was great. The owner came around and was like, she acted like she knew all of us and she did it because she comes up to me and she goes, oh, Addison, what did you want for, um, they were ordering us lunch because we were doing inventory. I'm like, that's not my name. <laughs> oh, Addison, she just like assumed. It was Emily L. All through, oh, your comment disappeared. Hold on. It was Emily L. All through elementary school and high school. Yeah. Only one other Emily at that time. There aren't as many Emilys now, but there were a lot when I was, like, in my grade growing up. I had quite a few Emilys. You're somehow the only, always the only Des. That's, I like that name, Des. I have a friend named Des. It's Desiree. Your name, Micah, and now when I hear someone with my name, it's a boy. I like the name Micah, too. It's very, I used to have a rock collection. So I like the name Micah. Terry, and everyone says... I keep, I wish that it didn't keep changing every time there's a new comment. Mine is Terry and everyone says, you're sure it's I, I, oh yeah. So they think it's a mistake. <laughs> there's actually two eyes. That's interesting. I like that. Okay. I should keep going. Three Michaela's in your class. Yeah. Michaela is another one. My best friend's name is Michaela, but they, she spells it, um, like Michael A. So that's, I've seen it before, but it's a little bit more unique than some of the spellings, but there's a lot of different spellings of Michaela. Yeah, all spelled different, yep. Everyone here in Chile calls me Val, but there was a mixed up, if it was Valentina, Valeria, or Valeska. I like Valeria. That's cool, that sounds like Game of Thrones. 
I once went on a work course where three quarters of the females were all Jen. Ugh. But now I don't think I have a single student named Jennifer. So it's so interesting the um, the phases and the trends that names go through. I like to follow people on TikTok who there are a lot of people who um, analyze those trends and predict popular baby names and they go through old baby names. I really like names, like um, watching videos about that. There's one woman who goes through old yearbooks. And it's really cool to look at the names. I have a bunch of, I have a couple of old yearbooks actually, not a bunch, but I have a few and it would be cool to go through those and see some of the names. Okay. So Edna did not go to CR this evening. Lloyd went though on, or went through actually his way to Omaha. Nelly, I'll catch up with the comments in a second. Came out in the evening and stayed all night. Edna helped her with her income tax. <laughs> okay, so let me go back. Um, I love that name. I'll have to go back and see what name. The only Corinne you've met. I've met, I met one Corinne. Actually, I know two Corinne's. One growing up and I met one in college. Jen Aniston. Yeah, Rachel Green. <laughs> That's funny. Jen Aniston and Rachel Green. My daughter's name is Ella. People get it wrong. Oh, Elia. Yep. And they probably say Ella. To my defense, the text is very small. It looks like Ella. I like that. Is it Elia or Elia? I have a student named Elias. But he's a boy. Okay, I'm all caught up. Okay. I was right the first time. Did, what did I say the first time? Elia? Did you find the birth certificate for daughter Edna? Yes, and I have something interesting about that. So um, you missed a bit what's in Omaha. I think that Lloyd's train runs back and forth to Omaha. That's what it seems like because it says, um, it said that twice where Lloyd went on the mail train to Omaha. So it must just go back and forth. It must be a town nearby. I think it is. And what was I just looking? Oh, the birth certificate for the, there's a line under Lloyd because it wants it to be spelled with two L's, but it's spelled with one L. So you know what I'll do? I'll add it to our dictionary. <laughs> so we'll ignore that. Um, I do have Edna's birth certificate and something interesting about that. Hold on. It's going to be tough for me to get here because this is a windowed, like a smaller version because I have to show both things on my screen so I can't see quite everything and it's annoying. But if I can get back to the family tree, I can look for Edna's birth certificate. View and tree. All right, you're talking about daughter Edna, right? Thank you are. I'm going to click on daughter and I can't see that comment anymore. So unless let me try to go. Yeah. Daughter Edna, you did say that specifically. Okay. So in my not gallery would be in here. I think sources. Okay. There is a birth certificate here. But what's interesting about the birth certificate is I was talking to, I forget if I was talking to, I don't remember who I was talking to this about, talking about this too. But we were talking about how, oh, it was you, Emily. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was Emily or Valentina because we've been talking a lot. Um, this birth certificate was actually created on, so she was born in 1909, but the birth certificate itself is dated for 1940, where is it? 43. So this birth certificate was like recreated. I think you said it was an affidavit uh, in 1943, which is very interesting. So maybe they didn't have that in the kind of the theory that Emily and I were talking about was it could be that maybe they didn't have documentation and Todd, they were kind of getting his affairs in order because of what happened 
and maybe they needed documentation that Edna was his daughter. I don't know. And then one other thing that we noticed, I had seen this before because this name is unforgettable for me. It's like, I think it's a common name over in Iowa in that area, but I've never seen it before. So it stuck with me, Dvorak. So this is one of their neighbors. They talk about the Dvoraks. I think they're actually like, I think that the Dvoraks are related in some way, like through marriage. So he was also the physician or mid midwife, one of them that delivered Edna. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go through to March and then maybe we'll end there. So Edna's helping Nellie with her income tax. And then on the 27th, we have another longer entry. Cloudy today. Todd went out for a walk and stopped to see, we were just talking about a Dvorak, Bill Dvorak, who has been sick. Yeah, they, um, Kay said, love how they wrote the weather a lot. Yeah, and that's kind of, that's why we called him the weatherman. Because in the beginning of the diary in 1943, we didn't know his name. We didn't really know anything about him other than the fact that he talked about the weather all the time. So that's why we call him the weatherman. Okay, so Bill Dvorak, who's been sick. Nellie here for supper. I can zoom in a little bit more. Um, Edna worked around home all day. She brought up the old laundry, or she brought the old laundry stove, stone, up out of the basement and cleaned it up and also cemented it oh we'll have to figure out what that means because i don't know is that is a laundry stone or a laundry stove nelly is a teacher yes i don't know at this point if she is i think she is because i think i'm thinking of edna the daughter like she's 19 years old because the picture that we have of her she's young she's in high school but she's actually older at this point so yeah maybe they wash stuff on the stone the laundry store maybe well the cemented thing makes me feel like it is a stone let me search it oh laundry stone So it's a thing. So it must be that. And I wonder what cementing it means. Like maybe resurfacing it. Jeez. Oh, well, that's ancient. Okay, so, but maybe it's like a sink of some sort, like a stone sink. You might need to cement a stove into place. Yes, that's true. So maybe she, so out of the basement and cleaned it up and also cemented it. Okay, yeah, I don't know. If you add 1940s, it'll show you a sample. Okay, that's what I'll do. Oh, okay. You know what's funny? I'm looking for a house right now, and I'm pretty sure the house that we did not get this weekend had one of these stones. It did. It had an old stone sink in it, and the house was built in the 1940s. So that's what it's called. That's cool. Okay. So, we've got a few more days left of February, I think. That's the same one. When you typed in laundry stove, you got Queenie stoves. Probably not what she meant, though. Maybe. I don't know what, like, I don't know. It could be either. We could zoom in more. I will. Yeah. Thanks, Anne. That's exactly what I was going to do. You guys are good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Micah, we learn something new all the time. Random little um, tidbits. 
Oh, I didn't write the day again here. What is with me? I don't know. I've like, that's not been a thing before. And now today, every time I stop, it's laundry stove for boiling water. You can see her specific V. Okay, let's go back. Since we only have a couple of days left, we'll go back. You think so? Okay. Yeah. The word looks a little squished. But yeah, maybe it's laundry stove. It's interesting that both of those things exist, though. I wish that one of them was obviously the right one, but we'll go with that. So Monday, February 28th. rather cloudy today. Nothing unusual today. Laundry stove, a stove adapter to the needs of a laundry, especially one designed for heating of irons and polishing stones. Okay, irons and polishing stones. Look at the N in cleaned though. It's the same as stone. Okay. So yeah, it's similar it's a tough one because I could see S T O V E like the V kind of goes into the E. I feel like I thought stone before, but now I think it's stove. I think we should leave stone stove since we don't know. Okay, let's do that. I wonder if Todd had diaries as a younger man. I think he did. It seemed like in that eBay listing, there were a lot of diaries all consecutive, like year after year. So it seemed like he definitely, at least as an adult man, kept them. I feel like it might be a laundry board thing. I can't imagine she carried a whole stone stove by herself. That's true. I don't know. You're right. That thing would be very heavy. All right, so, oh, we've got February 29th. And then I think after that, that would be the last. And I think, I mean, March 1st is a good way to leave it, I think. Like, um, at the end of one month. 1944. Quite a nice day. Todd wa went down town today. So one thing... Is my connection better on my desktop than when I was on my phone? Because I only noticed once today that it looked like it was lagging a little bit. It seems a lot better because on my phone, especially like an hour and a half in, it would like really start to give us trouble. So yeah, it was a leap year. If I go back in time, I'm asking them if they meant stone or stove. That's funny. You think it's okay. So it's much better. That's really good. So that's another benefit of this set up. Good. Okay. So was there anybody that we were talking about that we could look up right now? Or are you guys ready to log off? Froze for, yeah, like maybe two seconds. That's what I noticed. And that was all. So that's good. That's a record, I think. Maybe I'll go back to these things and I don't know. I have to add these people to the, the diary. I know I don't want to log off. <laughs> I never want to. Let's look people up. Okay, we have to figure out who to look up. Do we meet only on Tuesdays? Usually, right now, I've been going on on Tuesdays. Um, yesterday, I went on for an extra live because I was testing out the new computer setup. So I was on here yesterday for like... I, I was only supposed to be on for like a half an hour, but I was on here for a couple of hours. Um, I can find out for you... Um, what time it's in Ireland. Add 99 words so it's 11,111. Oh, 11, we will. We're going to add more words next time we're together. We need an index of main characters. Okay, why don't we do that together? That's what we'll do before we log off. So this is kind of like what my uh, main character list has looked like now. So maybe before or here's what I did in my with my other diary that I did research on I have pages for anybody who I've been able to like anyone who's like a um, main character like Todd's direct family and then anyone who I found pictures of and stuff and then I have another page well actually we want to put that after Nellie 
Maybe like after, I don't know. It, it's hard to figure out what um, order to put things in. But I have another page where I'll say like, oh, other people in the diary. So maybe what we can do together is list some names and then this can serve as like a starting point. If anyone wants to help us research, this would be a good list. That's what I had done with the doctors. I had them all on here in a list. But then Valentina and I found all of his doctors so far. I don't think there's any other doctors that were missing. And I'm going to put Dr. Jones in here, I think. And I had put possibly, but I think that we're pretty certain that that is Dr. Jones because there's really no other Dr. Jones in the area. Oops. See, this is the problem. I'm trying to do this when it's only a half screen, but... Okay, so Dr. Herman is this one. The young guy. I don't think he was young at the time, but... That picture, actually, remember I was talking about passport photos? That picture is from his passport. So that's where we got that one. In the other diary that I read, if you watch some of the videos, I put in any pictures that I find of people, I put it in the video as I'm talking about them, and you'll see that lots of the pictures of people in that diary look like this because they're passport photos. Could I screenshot the family tree maybe? I can try, but Ancestry doesn't show a lot of people at once, but I can definitely at least screenshot this main family tree. Oh, it's going from Alice right now. So let me do view his family tree, Todd. I could definitely screenshot this, which would give us, hold on, let me do this. I'm taking like a, a screenshot. It doesn't get Lloyd's kids though, but it's something to help kind of give the perspective and I can keep that in there. Okay, um, hold on. Oh, are you guys being nice? <laughs> Do we have pictures of places and streets that he wrote about? We have some lovely pictures that Kelly sent in. I don't know if you guys can see it. I think you can see it. Um, these pictures are all of Fairfax, the town that Todd lived in. Kelly lives nearby and she goes by there every weekend or yeah, every weekend. And she took some pictures for us. So those are in there. Those are all of the places nearby to Todd's house because the town is pretty small. This is the railroad depot. I found that on one of the historical society websites. And then these are Todd's house and Edna's house. These are some overhead. Like this is the town of Fairfax. You can barely see it because it's pretty small on the phone, but this is Todd Delaney's land, or it might be his father's land because they're both Thomas. And then this is like an overhead shot of that same street. And then these are some other towns that were talked about. I haven't really added to this list in a while because I was making this list when we didn't know what town Todd was from. Then when we figured out is Fairfax, I kind of stopped keeping track of the other towns, but we definitely can go back and add that. Seems like a lot of you guys are the same way that I am. Like you like to list things, you like to collect things, and you like to put things together. So that's good. So why don't we, oh, Dr. Herman's first name, sorry, I totally missed that, is Christian. He's in here. And if, if you go onto the website, you can click on this slides and see it bigger. So Christian Henry Herman. Yes, Rachel, it's very nice to organize. And all of this is on the blog. So I'll open up. This is what the blog looks like. It's This is like on a windowed version, so it's a little bit more clunky looking. But basically, this is my website. It's on my link tree. And you can it has like links to everything, which is cool. But it also has the transcribed diary with pictures. And you can click on it. Put the people and places at the top. This is the 1943 diary. And then this is the 1944 so this has all of the same, like all these slides that I'm showing are on the website. When his father moved to Fairfax, he bought a farm called Vanderbilt. Oh, that's cool. Yes, um, yes, uh, Valentina. Dr. Herman's father was also Dr. Christian Herman. So it took us a little while to nail down who was who. But why don't, I don't know, would it, I don't know if it would be easy right now to list, see, this is Todd's doctors. I want to write like, other P 
people in the diary. We can list a few people from today if you guys remember any, but I don't know if you will. Because <laughs> I definitely don't like off the top of my head, but then we could um, always go back into the entries and list people. But yeah, Kit and Pauline, and we can write, if we know anything about those people, we can add it in. Hold on, let me see if I can make a bulleted list. Again, it's windowed, so it's strange. I don't see everything. There we go. Okay, so let me put in Kit, and that was short for Catherine and Pauline, and they're mentioned together a lot, so I'll keep them together. I'm going to make this font smaller. Oh, it's not easy when it's closed and it's smaller. There we go. Now you guys should be able to see it again. Okay, I can make it even smaller than that, actually, because we're not going to be able to see much. Okay, so Kit and Pauline, and that was Todd's sister and niece, correct? Am I going to spell that right? Is niece I-E? It doesn't look right. <laughs> Whatever, it's not um, red, so. Okay, so then we had Leo. I'm having a hard time reading the chat. Hold on. Leo Hasley. Todd, I don't think he was... Well, I don't know. Someone asked if, t Brad asked if Todd was a wealthy man. I was going to say no, because he was a farmer, but he owned a lot of land. So, maybe. Alice and Chet. Um, yeah, I remembered. Dvorak. <laughs> I'll never forget that one. Okay, Florence Fox. Yes, that's true. And this is just from today. Yep, I put Leo here. Will I make a TikTok for names and photos? I should. I really want to find a picture of Todd. But Thomas Sr. was the president of Fairfax Fair. He was an influential man in town. That's cool. I haven't looked much into Todd's dad. So I wonder if I could find a picture of him. I think at that point, like, it was, it's a little hard to find pictures of people that long ago. For the part of the diary I've been here for, it seems Todd loved a comfy life, lived a comfy mo life money-wise. I think so. He definitely worked hard. And no, we don't have a picture of Todd. We only have a picture of his daughter, Edna. You found a picture of him? Of Todd? You should send it to me. That would be a breakthrough. Thomas Sr. Oh, really? Did I? Maybe I saw that. Hold on. Let me go. No, I don't have it. Let me search on here. I didn't look much into him. I was more like focused on Todd, but yeah. Now, did you find that contacting the railroad? Yes, you told me about that yesterday to contact the railroad, but I... I'm going to write it down. The problem is I'll like say, oh, that's a great idea. And then after these are done, I forget. We can't leave until we see the photo. I know. I got to figure it out how to get it. Um, so I'm going to write down to reach out to the railroad. They might even just have some older pictures they could share. You'll remind me. Thank you. We'll need a note taker. <laughs> we'll need to start employing a note taker. Um, okay. So I need to know more about this picture. Who said they found the picture? Jen, you got to tell me how to get to the picture. Where did you get it? You'll send it to me. Okay, newspaper. So are you sending it? Where are you sending it? Discord, Instagram. Yes, we'll find, we'll see the picture of his dad before we go. What year was he born in? Okay, um, hold on. Jen, just let me know when, where you're going to send it and I'll open it up. I could also search newspapers.com, but he was born in 1881, I think. I can double check. The Thomas, the Todd that wrote the diary was Thomas. Um, he was born in 1881, yes. So technically his name is Thomas, but he goes by Todd. And his dad's name was also Thomas, so it gets a little confusing. Discord, okay. Did you send it already? Oh, I think I see it. Okay, hold on. 
<laughs> I, I see some, I see a funny meme from Tina, <laughs> from, um, Valentina. Sorry, your, your name says Tina, so I always go to call you Tina. Okay, I'm starting a Google spreadsheet. That's not it. Where did you send it? I'll try it. Trying to. Oh, okay. Sometimes Discord does let you copy and paste things, or if you send me a link, I can open it. And yeah, it's Thomas James Delaney. Even in his obituary, it says Todd, yeah. I should, yeah, we should do a list of what the next research goals are. That would help guide us to in the group, I think. Maybe, so I was putting that in the subscriber chat one, but maybe I should make another little chat room and put, like, research ideas. And then if you guys, like, on your own time, if you're do trying to do this, you can um, start any of those projects. Okay, so I'll do that. I wrote in the Discord, but I thought we could maybe take the map and write the names of people. Oh yeah, we could. That would be cool. The thing about the census is it doesn't tell you where exactly the people lived. It doesn't give an address. It just lists them in order, but we could definitely like piece it together. Maybe we could spend a live doing that. That's stuff that I would do on my own. So that's cool. We could definitely go through and put the little people where they lived. <laughs> okay. So Delaney with or without an E seems to be both. Yeah, it's, what I found is it's D E capital L A N Y, but it seems like newspapers and obituaries, like it kind of goes back and forth. And on Ancestry, like you see here, this is just, I had accepted hints. I haven't really like gone through this and really nailed it down, but a lot of records do have an E. Like even here, his siblings picked up an E. That might have just been an accident. Like that might have just been on a record. It misread it, but. It definitely goes back and forth. Sometimes it says where they lived. Yes. I haven't found any addresses, though, as far as, like, trying to find where Todd lived. It took me a while to figure it out. It's, there's technically no E in Delaney. Just some of them on Ancestry, I automatically added them according to, like, what Ancestry told me. And some of them, the records had an E. But nowhere, I think, like, in Todd's obituary, it's just D-E-L-A-N-Y. Yeah, I wonder how Todd would feel about all of this. I don't know. Does anyone watching live in Fairfax and can go to the Railroad Museum? Kelly lives nearby to the Railroad Museum. I can put that in the... She's in the Discord chat, so I'll say that. I'll say... I don't know if... I don't know if Kelly is here anymore or if she was here today, so I'll ask. Is the Railroad Museum in Fairfax? Is she in the Discord yet? I don't know if she got in. She's she's a subscriber, but I don't know if she's actually in here yet. Um, well, I'll send it, and then I'll also send it to her Instagram if she's not in here. So I said, I don't know if you're in the live, but people are asking about the Railroad Museum in Fairfax, wondering if you're able to swing by there on your way to see your daughter, <laughs> because she goes by Fairfax to see her daughter every weekend. So maybe she can do that for us or anyone in the area. He would be freaking out about the talking pictures on handheld bricks. Yeah, that's very true. Okay. Um... Okay, thank you, um, Coral, for that idea. It's called the Fairfax Station Railroad Museum. I'll type that in. Fairfax. Oh, so I wonder if that's the same little depot that I saw before. And now it's a museum. That would be cool. I wish I could get out there, but I'm from really far away. <laughs> okay, so what was I doing? We were making a little list here. This is what always happens. What was I doing? And it's like a rabbit hole of a billion different things. But I'll stay. Uh, it is past 830, but I'll stay on for a few more minutes. We can make another, a few more like bullets. What railroad did he work for? Um, I forget. Jennifer sent the pic to Instagram. Okay, I'll look. Where's my phone? Okay, it said somewhere I have his railroad retirement thing. Mm, 
it doesn't say. It's... Hold on. Get on the Patreon and get her a flight to Fairfax. That would be hilarious. Okay, um, does it say it on here? Oh, yep, here. So, CM... I think it's like something Milwaukee Railroad. Um, actually, you know where we can find it? On his... in his obituary. It said it. So, he... For the Milwaukee Railroad. So he worked for the Milwaukee Railroad. Okay, so you sent it on Discord too. I see you now. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Okay, so I need to open this in my browser so you can see it. Because it's on Discord, which is not a shared... It's not like open on the live, but... There is... That's, thank you so much for sharing this. The thing that's great about now that we're all working together to do this research, I really don't think that the last name is Delaney. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's spelled differently in a bunch of places. Maybe just, you know, over time, names change. I don't know. Or maybe I'll recheck Todd Delaney, but it seemed like, I don't know why I wouldn't be putting the E. There, I don't think there was an E. Um. So anyways, hold on. Um, we can read through that in a second, but that's really cool that we see his dad. We get a little bit more of a perspective of him. I think I hadn't looked him up much because he was, he's already dead when the diary was written. So I was just looking for people who were, you know, with us, <laughs> but that is so cool. Okay. So let's read. And yeah, you're right. He was super, he was prominent. So obituary of Thomas Delaney of Fairfax was prominent and progressive citizen of Fairfax township and interested in popular insurance concern here. Thomas Delaney, I always like, the, the T-H-O-S always messes me up. Yeah, I always want to say Thos. So many spelling variations and depending on pronunciation. Yes, very true. In the other diary that I read, her name is Anglesey. And people, um, every single newspaper article spells it differently. It's very hard to research them when it's like that because when it's a unique name. So Thomas Delaney, whose death occurred January 22nd, as noted in Saturday's Gazette, was born in Bureau County, Illinois, and Todd Delaney was born in Illinois, too, in 1851, where he lived until 1883. Coming to Fairfax with his family, he purchased the old Vanderbilt farm where he since resided. Okay, so the Vanderbilts must have lived there before. Maybe that's why it was called that. The deceased was united in marriage in 1874 to Bridget Carty, and she's from Ireland, actually. Um who died in June 1883. Oh, that's sad. So Todd's mom died when he was only like two years old. Five children were born to this union, four of whom still survive. Mrs. Leonard Parkin. Oh, and we know, so that's Leo. That's his wife. Well, Leo is her husband. William J. and T.J. Delaney. That's Todd. That's the one we're reading, of Fairfax, and Mrs. A. I. Murray, oh, yep, Murray, that name comes up a lot, of Cedar Rapids. Vincent, the youngest son, having passed away in August 1901. That's sad. Besides these, there is also left to mourn his loss, Miss Elizabeth Cardi, a sister who has lived with the family since the death of his wife. Thomas Delaney was prominent in this vicinity, having been connected with the West Side Mutual Insurance Company on the capacity of secretary from the past seven years. For the past seven years, he was also a director in the town of Mutual Des Moines. No man in this locality was more widely or favorably known than Thomas Delaney. That's so awesome. Whose funeral occurred today from St. Mary's Church at Fairfax. Wow. I love that. No man in this locality was more widely or favorably known than Thomas Delaney. So that makes me think I've been trying to figure out how to reach out to people in that town because if I can't get a hold of relatives, maybe I could get a hold of people from the town who might know that family name. And if this Thomas Delaney was so widely known and was so big in Fairfax, 
the next Thomas Delaney, his son, must have been pretty prominent, too. This is not the Thomas Delaney that we're reading about. This is his dad. But this is still something that I did not have before. So I'm putting this in... This is just how I add stuff in here. So I guess I'll put him... I'll put him in this slide, because that's where I have Mrs. Gibson. Actually, it's so tall, I'm adding a new slide. Maybe there's a picture of his mother, too. I really haven't even searched. And I'm going to put a little caption, and I'll probably, like, make it look prettier after. But Todd's father, Thomas. And then I'm going to write... Hold on, I'm getting another message. I'm going to write, thank you, Jen. What a great find. I know. And I've started to say this before, but then I didn't finish my thought. But, um... Jen, is it 1N? Anyways, um, I was going to say this before and I forgot, but the best part about, okay, two ends, awesome. The best part about this, collaborating, having a group where we're researching together, is this sort of thing that I was talking about this yesterday, but basically when you're doing this kind of research, I'm focused on Todd. I'm focused on people who are immediately in his life. And it takes a long time to research those people and those places and all of these little side things like finding his parents, finding his siblings, that takes time in itself. So it's like it's too, almost too much for one person to be able to look through all of those records and finding the doctors. Like Valentina and I were looking for his doctors. And it's like if I'm looking for information about Todd and Edna and the immediate family, sometimes I'll decide, oh, you know, the doctors, if it's not really easy to find them, I don't, it's not like a priority and they'll get pushed aside. But when we have a team, then we're able to actually go after those specific little subsets and so now we have all of his doctors and now we have his dad so now someone could be on top of finding pictures of siblings and his mother we do have pictures of Edna's the wife's um family diary detectives is a whole new game I know it is it's like a game it's like a it's like a detective story when did Todd retire to? Where? Hold on. Where did Todd retire to? I don't know what you mean by that. Todd, are you talking about the father? Todd, the one in the diary, didn't... I don't think he really retired. He had a cerebral hemorrhage and then he stopped working. We mean business. Yes, we do. <laughs> Okay, so let me quickly just show you. I, I'm almost ready to log off. But Mrs. Gibson, that's the woman who Todd talks about a lot. They go and help her at her house. That's Mrs. Gibson. That's Edna's mother. This is Amos Gibson, Edna's father. He's got, like, attitude in that picture. I like it. But, yeah, I found a couple of pictures. I love to add pictures to the um, family trees. But... I haven't found pictures of everybody. Obviously, there's, like, hints ready for all of these people. I haven't had time to dive into them, but I do usually look for pictures quickly, and if I can't find them, then I move on. But, okay, so you're glad you came across my page. What an awesome community this is. Yes, thank you. I agree. This has been, this is so fun. And I used to just do all of this same thing. This is exactly what I used to do just by myself. And I did that with the 1917 diary, the whole entire thing. And I still do. That one I've still been kind of doing on my own because not everybody is, like, in the loop with everything. Because it's just been so long that I've been researching that one. But this one, we started together and we're continuing together. So it's really cool. Everyone's, like, on the same page. But, okay, so through all the people. Yeah. Wait. Hmm. I just found a video from the 40s and 50s. Oh, and it's Milwaukee Railroad. They're going through all the people. Ooh, can you send me that link, please? That's awesome. Coral, you're on this. I like the name Coral, too. We were talking about names before. I actually knew someone named Coral, believe it or not. I worked with someone named Coral. 
So many Bridget Cardis born in Ireland around when Bridget would have been born. Oh. See, I don't see the Ir the Irish records because I downgraded my Ancestry subscription because it was just too expensive for the um, international one. So any of those records from overseas, they're blurred out for me. So if you can see them and you find something, let me know. You're caught up on inks now and dying for more. Yeah. There's more coming from for inks. I'm going... To Brooklyn. Well, I'm going to Brooklyn and I'm going to Long Island. Is Brooklyn technically on Long Island? I don't know. But her summer home is further out on Long Island and I'm going there over the summer to give a, um, like a speech, a presentation. So I'm very excited about that. Irishgenealogy.ie is free. Okay, let me open it. I always misspell this. Genealogy.ie. If you have a library card, they sometimes give you access to Ancestry. Yes, um, I think that the one that my library gives us, this isn't working for me. Maybe, oh, wait, maybe it's just not loading. There it is. Okay, cool. I'm going to bookmark that. Um, my library, I think they require you to go there. Did I get the link? Where did you send the link? Did you send it on Discord or on Instagram? Let me also open up my phone. This is what's good about me being on my computer. I can open up my phone at the same time. Hold on. <laughs> There's a guy with the nickname Curly and he's got pockets full of fruit. <laughs> okay. Okay, hold on. I see... Oh, I see your name, Coral. Okay. I got the link to the YouTube. Thank you. Wow, that's cool. Okay, I wonder, are there names? I It's not really playing because I think my, oh, oh my god, it's an hour and 37 minutes long. Okay, we'll have to, I'll send this link in the Discord too. And, um, that's not the website. I'll send you a link. Okay, send me a link. I'll put the link of the video in the Discord too and we can, maybe we can take sections and we can watch it. <laughs> and we can see if Todd's in there. That would be really cool. That would be amazing. Coral Reef. Yeah, that's my, uh, that's funny. Um, my dad's name is Carl. And he goes by Coral Reef sometimes <laughs> as a joke. Okay, so who is Mrs. Sheldon? We found her gravestone, but I haven't looked for any pictures of her. What I would do next to find pictures of her would be to go on to newspapers.com but it's getting kind of late. Yes, the, so the question is, is the Discord $5 a month? The regular Discord, which is just for like announcements, I'll announce when I'm going live, I'll send updates and stuff, that is free. So you can just click on the link in my um, link tree to get to that. But that's like a read only. It's only just to get announcements to see when things are happening and I'll like remind when I'm going live. The Diary Detectives that we've been talking about, that's like the Discord, um, that's like the Discord club. I was trying to think of the word. It's like the club that we made. So that one is the $5 a month one. So it's the same Discord, but it has like hidden rooms that you can't see unless you're part of that. So that's what we're talking about when we say like in the Discord. Like the YouTube link. The, the YouTube link is also in my link tree. But the YouTube, obviously, that's like a free, like, it's just YouTube. But the Discord is actually a, um, like a chat thing. It's a professional organization. You're right. Diary Detectives Co. <laughs> okay, so what I would do here, I'll just, um, no, the one the person just sent you. Oh, the, hold on. What? The YouTube. Oh, the... Okay, the YouTube link, I'm going to put it, I'll put it in the, um, the free Discord then, too. I'll just put it in the announcements one, or in the links or something. But I was just going to send it to the Diary De Detectives Discord, but I guess I'll, I'll send it to the everything. Are you going live Monday again next week or just Tuesday? I think just Tuesday. Unless we decide to do something, like, research-wise on Monday. I'm going to do the readings on Tuesday. Okay, so let me, I don't know, I think I should go. I think it should be time to to call it. But 
I can look up what was that last person of course like one more thing always one more thing what was her name it was over here this is the last thing I'm gonna do yeah and then it's bedtime Myrtle Sheldon 1944 we'll see just what pops up and then we'll leave okay so Myrtle Sheldon I'm gonna put it in quotes 1944 in Iowa So that's like looks like it's here it is. Is that her? No, that's someone else. Okay, so this is talking about her services. There's probably gonna be a few of those, yeah. It doesn't look like there's any pictures of her easily available. But we have more information about her family and everything, so we could figure out more about that. I know that's why I was able to find the doctors. I couldn't stop. I know that's my problem. Right now, my I'm in grad school and my class is over. So that's good because I don't have any homework that I should be doing. But oh my God, when I have homework to do and I just want to do this, it's painful. Okay, so I'm going to log off, I think. It's nine. So that's later than I wanted to be on here. It's always what happens. So I will, I haven't made a event on TikTok yet. Actually, look at this. I can do it right now because now I'm like hands-free. I've got my phone. Normally I'm streaming on my phone, but now I'm streaming on my computer. So what, oh, you know what? My phone, I don't even think, thinks I'm going live. So hopefully this actually let people know that I went live. Did anyone get a notification? Did you register and get a notification? Because if you didn't, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Because I'm streaming from my computer and it didn't, like, link. You did? Oh, okay. All right. Did it say that I was going live or did it say that the live event was happening? Okay, that's good, though. Let me know if it specifically said the live event that you registered for. Both. Okay, good. Okay. So that's all I needed to know. So now I'm going to go and make one for next week. And what's the date next Tuesday? The 9th. So I just call it Weatherman <laughs> Diary Live. And it's going to start on May 9th at 6.30. Okay, and then I just usually put that it's going to be... I think I usually just do two and a half hours. I don't want it to like end on me, but that's a good time. Yeah, that goes till nine. We don't always go all the way, but okay. Um, bye everyone. I know a couple of you are leaving. So bye Emily. Thank you. Myrtle passed away the same year as Todd. Yes, that's true. No, I don't think I got a notification, but you save it to your calendar. Yeah. TikTok's weird. Sometimes it doesn't, but if you're in the discord now, like even the free discord, I send out a notification, but okay. So right now I'm making that event. So hopefully, um, it will. Oh, it was an invite for you. That's interesting. TikTok is weird and it sends out invites now. Like, oh, this person invited you to their live. One time I thought someone was inviting me personally and I was so flattered and it, it's just like random, but I'm glad you guys are here. You're always invited. Okay. So I'm putting in a description, help us decipher a diary from 1944. And then I'll create that. So it should be up in a minute or two. It usually it's under review for a second, but I think it's, it's up. Yeah. So if you want to go to my page and register for that, you can, or I will send a notification in the discord. Um, but yeah, let's, um, come back next week and I'll see you then. Thank you. This is so fun. Every single time you guys are awesome. And I hope that you join in next time. Um, I got the diary on eBay. <laughs> Sorry if you just joined in, but see you next week, next Tuesday. If I do an extra live, I'll put it in on the discord if I do one on Monday, but I probably won't. So, all right. Bye-bye. It's going to take me a second to figure out how to even get off of this. So night, everybody.